On the morning of September 11, 2001, two planes hit the World Trade Center towers in New York City. Even though I don't live in New York anymore, I do remember that day very clearly. I was home taking care of my daughter, who was about uh, one at the time, and I remember watching those events unfold on the news. It seemed very real to me because almost a year prior to that event, I was uh, living in Mexico City, and then I moved back to Long Island. Uh, my first job when I got back to New York was in a language school uh, near Wall Street uh, in New York City. I used to take the A train to the World Trade Center every day, and my job was about two blocks from the towers. I ended up getting a job closer to home about like six months later, but I do have clear memories of seeing those two buildings up close on a daily basis, as well as all of the surrounding areas and streets. And that day, those streets were completely uh, covered in rubble. Also that day, there were a few uh, albums released. Uh, one was by Slayer called uh, God Hates Us All. That was a kind of a very uh, dark coincidence, uh, you know, that album having that title being released on that particular day. Another one, um, this one, P.O.D. Satellite, that's a, a new metal group. They're also a Christian group, so kind of like the extreme opposite of uh, that Slayer album. The band Dream Theater released uh, live scenes from New York, and that cover had the Manhattan skyline on fire um, showing the uh, Twin Towers you know, in the background. Kind of a very unsettling uh, view, if you think of it, you know, considering it was released on that day. The band uh, quickly uh, changed that cover to a different one. And uh, lastly, Nickelback's uh, Silver Side Up, which is going to be the subject matter of the rest of this video, also came out on that day. So the album, it's not that bad. You know, I know uh, Nickelback gets a lot of hate. Uh, you know, the band actually has a Diamond certified album called All The Right Reasons, but this um, is an album, and the problem is it has a song that was like really overplayed on the radio, but that song actually made them uh, superstars. And it's also one that kind of made the band that, you know, people love to hate. Never made it as a wise man. Couldn't cut it as a poor man steal it Tired of living like a blind man Sick of sight with a sense of feeling And this is how you remind me This is how you remind me of what I really am So the song I'm talking about is called How You Remind Me basically played on the radio all the time. It didn't matter if it was a rock station or a pop station. It was played about once or twice every hour. Not really a bad song. Um, it did have like a post-grunge vibe. Uh, there were pretty much only like so many times you could hear the song over and over though. So you do get tired of it. And I'm kind of talking about like 20 years ago when it was being played constantly. But the rest of the album is not too bad. So let me uh, talk about the songs. First song is called uh, Never Again. It has a 90s grunge sound. The song is about domestic violence. T tells the story of a woman who lives with a husband who uh, you know, gets drunk and becomes very violent. You know, the lyric kind of like is a storytelling song. It tells about all the things a woman had to face. It's a hard rocker, has some heavy uh, guitar riffs, a thick bass sound, cool drum beat, and it's a really good song for an opening track. Next is How You Remind Me. I'm not going to talk about that one. Next is uh, Woke Up This Morning. It's another good song with a grunge sound. It's also very melodic. Has some cool uh, talk box vocal effects and uh, the guitars are very grungy and there's some pretty cool riffs. Next is Too Bad. This one's a little slower. It reminds me a little bit of like a Pearl Jam song. It has that type of atmosphere. This is also the, a single that was released. It was written by Chad Kroger and about how he felt uh, living without a father who abandoned him when he was two. Song does have some slow atmospheric parts in the beginning and does have a catchy chorus. Next is a song called Just Four. This one has a heavier guitar intro. This one reminds me a little bit of uh, Soundgarden. The lyrics are from the point of view of wanting to get revenge on a man who has hurt another woman. It's a fast paced rocker, has a lot of energy. Also a re-recording of a song that appeared on their 1996 album Curb. Next is Hollywood. A slow and heavy grunge song. It reminds me of a Soundgarden a lot. Has a heavy down tune guitars. Has some guitar effects, uh, distorted backing vocals. Chad Kroger uh, plays a guitar solo in the song. And the song was written back in the mid-90s before the release of their album, The State. Next is uh, Money Bought. 
This one has some distorted guitars in the intro and does incorporate some keyboard and sound effects. It's a very like 90s sounding song with a light verse and heavy chorus. And the song has like a thick uh, guitar sound as well. Next is Where Do I Hide? This one has a riff uh, reminiscent of Soundgarden again. The guitar riff uh, repeats along throughout the first verse and guitar solo played by Chad Kroger. Um, Where Do I Hide? It's a song about a friend who uh, used to bust out of prison uh, from time to time and go back to uh, Nickelback's hometown back in uh, Hannah, Alberta, Canada. Next is Hangnail. This one is a grungy riff in the intro. The song was written back in the mid-90s uh, before they released uh, their album The State. It has a very uh, 90s uh, grunge sound, a lot of guitar feedback and heavy riffs. And the last song is Good Times Gone. This one sounds a lot different than the other ones. This one I actually like a lot. It's kind of like a country or like a southern rock ballad. Uh, the intro reminds me of a band like Bad Company. It has an acoustic guitar intro and the song is a mixture of like southern rock and grunge uh, mixed with like acoustic guitar, some slide guitar and distorted feedback. So it's a really good song and a really good uh, album closer. So as a final score, so let's say we uh, we start at 10, but then we subtract 5 because of how you remind me. And that's kind of a song that a lot of people skip. But then I'm going to add another extra point for Never Again, Too Bad and Good Times Gone. So those are the best songs in the album. So 5 plus 3 is 7. So as a final score, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. That's not like a really high score, but it's probably better than like what most people would rank a typical Nickelback album. So if you are a fan of the 90s grunge scene, I think this would be a pretty good album to revisit. It does have a nice vibe if you like uh, Soundgarden and Pearl Jam. So that is it. Uh, coming up next tomorrow, I'm going to do another uh, new release. I uh, haven't decided what I want to do yet. But I'll do one new release and then um, next Monday through Thursday I want to finish out my Iron Maiden uh, series. I have four more albums to complete and um, that will be it. So stick around. Uh, this is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John. Please like, comment, subscribe and I will see you in the next one.